All right. All righty. Well, welcome to IAEI News Live. Today's discussion is going to be on Transformer Fundamentals, and it all starts now. Right. Okay. Well, I'm having, uh, I just got done with, if there's anybody out there from Alabama, welcome. Um, and uh, I'm getting, uh, I'm just getting organized right now because I just got off of another program with the Alabama chapter. I can't, I think it's the central division. I can't remember, but in any case, um, we had a, uh, we had a great discussion about arc flash and the NEC, and we will. I will do that program uh, again right here on IAEI News Live. So um, stay tuned for that one. So that was NEC and Arc Flash. I just got to get my presentation material up, but remember that membership has its advantages. So as this opens. I got a couple things. So, hey, Michael Hofgun, it was great seeing you at the international board meeting last week as well. Good to see you online, my friend, my brother, from another mother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, I was just saying, Michael, I'm, we had uh, we had a great discussion, and for the Alabama guys, uh, I just got off a two-hour program on Arc Flash and the NEC, and I was letting everybody know about the IAEI's YouTube channel. Uh, you know, we need to get the subscriptions up. So I got to get everybody out there to subscribe to this YouTube channel because we are growing it. We are, uh, we're busting at the seams. It's just amazing how much we are going to um, get done on IAEI's YouTube channel. There's a ton of great materials out there. So please uh, hit those thumbs up. And if you want to hit the thumbs down, you got to hit it twice. Subscribe to the channel. And I believe I have... I've got it. I've got it right here. And I think I go like this and I just say subscribe to IAEI's YouTube channel. So please don't forget Vincent Dada Kroch from sunny Florida. We got to do a program on IAEI News Live. Vince, uh, you gotta let me know your schedule and let's get you in front of as many people as we can. Uh, we want to make sure that the smart ones shine. We don't want the smart ones to have a shiner. We just want the smart ones to shine. Okay, Chris Foland. No, you are not late, buddy. You are in the driver's seat. So get ready because this program is going to be on transformer fundamentals. It's um, and, and if there's any piece of equipment in the power distribution system, I know conductors, that's the glue, right? Pulls everything together. Overcurrent protective devices, we did both the circuit breaker and we did the fuse. We did panel boards. So if you see my gist on what I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm laying down a foundation on equipment. And each of these categories are going to have a channel, not a channel, what do they call it? On YouTube, they call it something else. They call it... Um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to figure it out here so hold on. They call it uh playlists. That's what I'm going to do. I'm making playlists on this YouTube channel associated with each of these pieces of equipment. So Vince, you know, be keep your mind on this. Get your popcorn ready or Jody Wage is in the house. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create playlists around equipment. So my goal is going to be I lay down a fundamentals program. We understand the fundamentals. And then we're going to get into more details on the book, the code, you know, NEC requirements that pertain to that equipment. We'll talk about 70E that pertains to that equipment. We'll talk about 70B as in maintenance that pertains to that equipment. So we're going to have a channel. We're going to have a YouTube channel and we're going to have playlists that are specific to the equipment that we work on whether it be a panel board, switch board, switch gear, motor control centers, um, transformers, that's today's topic. So that's sort of my where my head's at. We'll see where that goes. All right, so again, uh, 
Don't forget, membership has its value because here's be here's the here's the gotcha. Uh, we were talking at the board meeting, and I got to I got to see all the great people at IAEI, and um, I think what we're going to end up doing, I know what I'm going to be doing here is uh, we're going to have some member only discussions. So you get the basics for free, but then through your IAEI membership. We're going to be providing the in-depth analysis with guys and gals, guys like like um, Michael Hofkin and Vince Delacroche, Chuck uh, Mello. Uh, we might even have the Mark Earleys of the world on. So we're going to have our technical experts who you may see at a section meeting or at one of these other meetings. We're going to be doing in-depth, and that's going to be available to IAEI members. So please, uh, and, 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 and if we get enough members on the YouTube, uh, channel, we could have a paid subscription uh, that that if you you know maybe you well maybe you don't want to uh, become a full fledged IEI member you just want to have uh, access uh, in in a in a paid only or members only portion of the YouTube channel. We're going to be expanding and creating those opportunities. So don't forget it. All right, please subscribe. Please, it helps the IAEI considerably. All right, Vincent, uh, we got uh, better get your pop popcorn ready. Now, remember too, there is um, there are links down below, up above, to the right, to the left. I don't know, uh, depending upon the platform, because right now we're streaming to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. I might even be on my Twitter site. I'm not sure. I didn't check my restream IO, uh, but we're 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 streaming out there to a few different channels. So uh, depending upon the environment that you're viewing this in. Remember, I've got a links. I've got links in there to the um, the store. You can buy analysis of changes books for for the current version or previous versions. I will say that um, there are a lot of other books. Uh, there's uh, the the uh, grounding and bonding, the Soar's grounding and bonding book. There's a one and two family book. If you're familiar with one and two family applications, you want to learn more about one and two family applications. There's a hazardous locations. There's there's all kinds of resources for you through the uh, links down below uh, to purchase uh, some of the resources that IEI has to offer. And I'll tell you what, every one of their publications, absolutely awesome. And as part of your membership, you get the magazine. Oh, look at this. Here is, like, I keep it. I keep these things like all around me. My, my wife yells at me because I don't know, but they're all here. IEI News Magazine, you get a nice hard copy, in, in, and I'm telling you what, the graphics in here, the pictures, the knowledge, the, um, the this, is an, this is a resource for the industry and in your membership. Um, remember, membership has its value. Membership has its value. This is one of the great values of that membership. You can also subscribe to this magazine separately and purchase uh, a copy of it. Um, I'm just looking, uh, I'm looking at this edition, I'm, and this is uh, September, October. They've got, uh, they got anatomy of a high-rise building in here, um, use of approved electrical equipment, new questions and answers, <clears throat> multifamily and high-rise installations and inspections by Crystal Hunter and Randy Hunter. Uh, we've got direct currents, circuits and microgrids requiring inspection in the not too distant future by John Wiles. <clears throat> Three key changes to the 2020 NEC that improve the recipe for residential kitchen safety by Corey Hanna from NFPA. UL Question Corner. UL Question Corner. I mean, come on. There's so Steve Douglas has 2021 CE Code Part One Article Three. There's uh, there's there's a lot of of great information in the book. You got to subscribe. And, and and take advantage of those resources. All right, Transformers. That's what we're here to talk about. So I'm referencing the 2020 code book, okay? What, I mean, Transformers, Transformers are fantastic in what they, in what they do, their function. Taking, they do two things. And, and a lot of people think, well, they take one voltage to another voltage. No, not necessarily. I can take one voltage to an exact same voltage. I can have 480 volts on the primary, 480 volts on the secondary. Isolation. Uh, there, there are so many different types of transformers on the market, so different many value propositions that you have on why you would want to have a transformer. 
And um, I will say that uh, uh, that it's 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 a fantastic piece of equipment, serves a great function, and we see them everywhere. Okay, so they're not. Um, this is not something that you're going to see seldomly. You know, transformers are all around us from outside. Uh, you got very large transformers. You got your pole mounted transformers, your substation transformers. You've got uh, control power transformers. You've got transformers in every part of the power distribution system, and every transformer needs to be protected. You've uh, you've all seen these big green boxes outside, um, and um, provide uh, for residential, commercial buildings, all that jazz. There's a simple one-line diagram, and I do mean simple one-line diagram. Um, so, just got to make sure everybody's happy. Okay, so there's your utility transformer. That can be a pole-mounted transformer. It can be a substation, a, a ground-mounted transformer. It can be a big boy like this. Uh, or it could be, again, a, 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 a smaller 25 kVA, 15 kVA, whatever uh, kVA that you have up there on a pole. Um, providing power from the utility. And the utility, in most cases, owns those. You have your control, your control power transformers. You know, it could be a, a, a CT is a current transformer. And you'll see the CTs and your PTs. So when you use these, will you use these in regard to... Um, uh, to metering, right? Uh, relaying could be a meter that's calculating watts, vars, and VA. Uh, it needs both voltage and current, and and we'll use current transformers for that. Uh, then you have your industrial control pumps. So these are your smaller dry type transformers. So you have um, you have uh, you, you you've seen these. I mean, I, I think this is what we deal with on a daily basis, more so than anything else um, from a from a power distribution system, you'll see these types of transformers um, in, you know, feeding substations, all that jazz. And then you have your control power transformers that you'll see down in industrial control panels, maybe in your motor, um, motor starting. So you'll see this in motor control centers and things of that nature. You'll see control power transformers. And in many cases, like you see right here, uh, right, 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 whoops, and right here, we have built-in overcurrent protection right on the top of these transformers, okay? And, and there's one right over here as well. So, so there are many, there are, there are many types of transformers, big and small, in, at outside sitting, sitting in a pad mount application, sitting up on a pole, in a power distribution system, in your facility, might be in a hallway, in a in a in a an electrical room, uh, I've seen these transformers suspended from ceilings in plants. There are transformers all over the facilities, and they all provide a function, a basic function of you have. Uh, this is a single. This is an image of a single phase transformer. Works off of some basic pr principles um, of. Um, Basic principles of, of magnetics, right? Of flux. You have current going through windings on on the on a solid on a, a an iron core, and the flux that we generate generates flux in the um, in the core and and transfers that energy from the line side to the secondary side and transfers that to the secondary windings and it generates a voltage and generates a current. So, Rudy Garza in the house. Thanks for joining us, Rudy. So a transformer is, 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 is a basic function, serves a basic function. It's a, it's a piece of equipment that will, that will help us trans, trans, uh, you know, transfer a, a voltage from a higher to a lower, from a lower to a higher voltage. So if I have a piece of equipment that operates on 120 volts, but I've got 480, I can get you 120, 120, 121, whatever it takes. Uh, by using a transformer. If I need to isolate my system for various reasons, maybe power quality reasons, if I need to isolate one portion of my power distribution system from another, I may not change voltage, but I'll use a transformer to give me that isolation. Um, 
I'll have to say about that. So I have, um, whenever I energize a transformer, I'll have inrush current. And the inrush current, I need to make sure my primary overcurrent devices will let that inrush current flow. But remember that on the secondary, on the secondary, I don't have an inrush current. So that is load current. This is inrush current. I don't have to have any current, any any load connected. When I energize a transformer, I will draw inrush current due to the hysteresis, due to the magnetization and and the uh, the flux that's generated just because of my voltage potential. I need to make sure that I can handle all of those applications from a basic transformer. I have some basic equations. Remember the number of turns literally are the number of turns of a coil around a, an iron core. Those number of turns between the primary and secondary uh, windings establish my voltages and my currents associated with this transformer. So the relationships are fundamental. They're based on physics. They will not change. I2 over I1. I2 is the secondary current. I1 is the primary current has a relationship with the turns ratio of N1 over N2. So it's an inverse relationship. I2 over I1 is equal to N1 over N2 turns. It's a ratio. V1 over V2 equals N1 over a N2. It's a direct ratio of the number of turns on the primary and the secondary. And because of these two relationships, I can relate, the pro I can relate both voltages to currents. So... Uh, this will help me, uh, I, the, the turns ratio helps me and others <laughs> uh, uh, transpose voltages and currents. Now, remember too, we calculate a full load amps, so and we're going to get there. But I'm not necessarily pulling full load current. Whatever my load current is on the secondary can relate to the primary based upon these turn ratio, these turns ratio uh, equations. But it doesn't have to be just the full load amps. And remember that the transformer doesn't stop working because it's a, there's a short circuit on the secondary, right? Transformers do their job all the time. And whether it's a short circuit that they're supplying current to or a lower than full load amps load current, there will be a transposition. I can use these equations to understand for any given value of current on the secondary of a transformer, what is the expected current on the primary of a transformer. If I have a voltage, say I have voltage drop situations where I have a long conductor run on the secondary of this transformer, I can increase the voltage via taps. I can change the taps. Hey, Lou Petrucci, good to see you, buddy. I can change the taps on this transformer and, and increase the voltage on the primaries and secondaries. I, on the secondary, I can increase the voltage or decrease the voltage I, by changing taps, and it's basically changing my windings. So you got to be mindful that these transformers can be used for various things. They are, these, there are some basic equations that we can leverage, and we will leverage, in their application. They always do their job of transposing currents and voltages, if that's based on the turns ratio, regardless of the conditions within the power distribution system. All right. Uh, this is an example of a single uh, core type single phase transformer and a shell type single phase transformer. It's, it's, it's where we wrap the iron, is uh, whether it's a core type or a shell type. Where the, how the iron goes around the windings. Uh, and this will give you an example <clears throat> of what we're doing here. You know, the core type is basically what I showed you before, and the shell type is when I have my primary and secondary windings around that same portion of the core. There, then you have a three-phase transformer. Now, three-phase transformers, remember, I have three separate circuits providing uh, a voltage. So I have a I have phase A, B, and C. Those are three separate circuits separated by 120 degrees. Ends up being 360 degrees. 
They're out of phase with each other. And basically I have a transformer where I can connect phase A, B, and C together and deliver power to a power distribution system. You know, it, it fall, it, it all, everything follows the same fundamental principles and equations that we previously looked at for single phase. And what you're going to notice, whenever I do a three phase calculation, say for full load amps, I convert everything to a single phase application and do the math. And we're going to show you those examples. But suffice it to say that your three phase, this is your core type three phase transformer, or you'll have phases A, B, and C. And this is a shell type of uh, three phase transformer. This is just a picture of uh, of what that looks like without me, and um, and what you'll see on, on from a winding perspective. There's how they go into an assembly. You've got your phases A, uh, B, and C, or A, B, and C. Say this is A, and this is B, and this is C, right? And there, and remember, this is your. Remember what we saw before. There's your square box, and then here are your individual cores that you're wrapped around. And then the next question is, where do you see that? There it is. There's your three-phase transformer in that big green box that we're all familiar to seeing. Phase, phase A, B, and C. And that transformer is inside this enclosure. And it's all, uh, we wire up to this and we pull all of the, uh, the primary and secondaries out to these um, Connection points. There's all your connection points and all your uh, capability, all your 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 uh, your equipment that for connecting either to the load or from the source. So your transformer is typically put into an enclosure, a big metal box. In this case, a big green box with doors, and. Um, and, 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 and in this case here, you'll probably see this outdoors and outside. So this will be a 3R enclosure. So the enclosure has to be rated for the application. Uh, your, your gray boxes that we showed will have vents on the top. We've got to think about heat. There will be heat that's generated and all that jazz. The transform parameters that we have to think about. KVAs, your kilovolt amperes. And this is an important thing. It's KVA. It's not watts. Right. So so when you're dealing with loads, uh, like in Article 220, right, we, we went through this. Look at Article 220. 220 are your load calculations. Right. So 220. 220.12 general lighting loads. We have volt amperes per square foot. We don't talk about watts per square foot. A lot of people in the in the life, a lot of people in um, in in uh, lighting applications and whatnot will be referencing uh, will be referencing like watts per square foot. We do that in the energy codes. We don't size equipment based upon watts. We consider voltage and current. We got to remember the power triangle. And if I were to draw the power triangle, I'm going to try to do this on the fly without MobyCam. Remember what the power triangle is. If I do this. This is, um, hold on, I'm going to do this. This is watts, this is vars, and this is VA, and this is your power factor. So what my transformer has to be able to handle this portion, that VA, which is the larger number. Now, when I say it has to be able to handle that, we can always push a transformer more than its VA rating. There's no requirement in the code that a transformer has to be sized to the load. I'm just saying. I can do certain things, which we'll talk about. We add fans to transformers to give a higher KVA capability of the transformer. Um, uh, so, but in any case, the, when I say KVA, I'm talking about the VA, that, that hypotenuse, right? 
watts across the bottom, vars up the side, VA, and my angle between my VA line, my hypotenuse, and watts is my power factor. Mr. Laughlin in the house. Yes, and Keith, you're right. We have a four-hour presentation on Transformers. And um, I, I, I'm, but, 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 viewers can go to IEI's website and see that IEI covers, offers a four-hour presentation on Transformers. The presentation is based on the 22 any, 2020 NEC. And we have a version on the 2017. Um, yeah, you need a snap glass there, Jody. Uh, so, so... And I'm Keith, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here. I like going out on limbs, uh, but I'm thinking that in the future, that four-hour program, we will have for IAEI members only. We're going to do an online uh, live video for that. Take questions on transformers. This is again a fundamentals, but Keith points out a very good point. He points out a good point. He brings up a very good point. Now, you have uh, transformer parameters, voltage on the primary, voltage on the secondary. You have a percent impedance. We'll understand that. X to R ratio. That's the reactance. Remember what an X to R ratio is. I, I, I threw it away, but remember, X to R. What is an X to R ratio? Let's go back to the triangle again. Okay. This is R, and this is X. So... Yes, a transformer is an inductance. It's an inductive, it's an impedance. And it's, I can't say it's a load. It's an inductive impedance. It's, it has a lot of X and it has a very little bit of R. So even a transformer, we, we, in many cases, when we do short circuit studies and whatnot, when we say percent impedance is, I don't know, 5.75% impedance, transformers have an X to R ratio, technically. There is a little bit of R in there. So that percent Z is the hypotenuse, which is comprised of an X, a real and a reactive component. Larger transformers will, will tell you what the X to R ratio is. And IEEE has documents that'll tell you what the X to R ratio is of a transformer. So you know how much R and how much X to include in your calculations if you want to be accurate so to speak. Um, full load amps on the primary and secondary. What do we use full load amps for? We have to know how to calculate full load amps of a transformer. Why? Because we have to size the overcurrent protected devices. And then we have to pick the conductors for primary and secondary. I need to know what my full load amps is on a transformer, primary and secondary, and we have to understand how to calculate that. So we will help you. But those are the key parameters, I would, I would argue. Uh, those are the key parameters that you need to be thinking about. Uh, 450, I'm going out on a limb here again, but I believe 450, yep, transformers and transformer vaults, including secondary ties. 450 is your transformer article to uh, to look at, and I'm just looking to see. Uh, ratings, the uh, that's an auto transfer. There's another, there's another, I mean, that could be a different day, but there's a, Oh yeah, we got motors out there too. I need, okay, I'm just looking at the chat real quick. Uh, -up 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 All right, so 450, we'll walk through, actually 450 is probably a good uh, discussion for a different day, but I was just looking for any marking requirements. 450.11 has the marking requirements. So let's take a look at 450.11. It says each transformer shall be provided with a nameplate giving the following information. Name of the manufacturer. Always important to know who the manufacturer is. Why? Because when you when you want to find out more information about a specific application or a product, you're going to need to call the manufacturer. Rated kilovolt amperes. So there's your KVA. Frequency. Oh man, another important one. What is the frequency? So um, if you had say 400 hertz, uh, you might have a different type of transformer. So yes, frequency is another important parameter. Primary and secondary rated voltages. Impedance of the transformers, 25 kVA and larger. So um, if, if you have a 25 kVA and larger transformer, you have to have the impedance marked. 
required clearances for transformers with ventilating open ventilating openings. So remember, uh, adjusted with any electrical product, heat is of concern. A mountain kind of insulation liquid where used for dry type transformers, temperature class for the insulation system. So, you know, environmental conditions and things of that nature are all important aspects of, um, of your transformer. Equations. There are basic transformer equations that help us understand um, some of the key parameters. So we'll do the calculations that are required for us to determine the overcurrent devices on the primary and secondary and, and the conductor sizes. And we use these equations. These equations are fundamental. It's like, it's like Ohm's law. I mean, the, the, these are fundamental equations that aren't going to change uh, based upon the type of transformers that you have. Remember those ratios, I, I2 over I1 equals N1 over N2. We're, we're going to use that. How are we going to use that? I can, if I know the secondary full load amps, I don't have to go through the whole math to calculate primary because the primary full load amps is I2 times N2 over N1. Uh, I don't need to do anything other than that as long as I know that turns ratio. And be careful because the three, oh, we'll, we'll get into that. I'm getting ahead of myself. There you go. Here's some important equations for you. Single phase, full load amps. Remember what we do and we, we did this in school? Cross out the Vs. I got a kilo amps. Cross out the Ks. And what am I left with? A for amps. So KVA divided by KV leaves amps. That's how I get my full load amps, whether it be on the primary or secondary. The voltage will determine um, what my for secondary, whatever my secondary volts is, will change the bottom. The, the denominator is going to change based upon if it's the primary or secondary, right? Especially if, if it's um, not a one-to-one -one transformer. Now, my three phase, I have now, and that's, I'm going to walk through this. I have KVA of three phase KVA. Multiply that by square root of three. Multiply that by a thousand. Divided by three. Divided by the volts. And I'll, I'll explain how I get that equation here in a second. So there's my single phase. So how I do my three phase is the first thing I need to do is get a three phase transformer to a single phase KVA. How do I do that? I take the KVA and divide it by three. That gives me my single phase KVA. So if I'm doing a three phase transformer, I want to get all of my parameters over to single phase and then I just do a single phase calculation for full load amps. So I take, to get the single phase KVA, I take my three phase KVA divided by three. That tells me my single phase KVA. To get my, and, and, that, would, and that, would suff, that would satisfy the top equation, my single phase KVA. So if I have a, um, I don't know, 300 KVA transformer, my single phase KVA is 100 KVA. Right, um, whatever my KVA is divided by three, and that's my single phase KVA. And then I have to divide that by the single phase KV. How do I get a single phase KV for say the secondary or primary? I take my three phase voltage and I divide it by the square root of three. And if I want to put it into KV, I divide it by a thousand. So remember, if I have um, if I have a thousand volts. A thousand volts, divide that by a thousand is one. It's one kV. If I have 1500 volts, 1500 volts, divide that by a thousand, it's 1.5. It's 1.5 kV. So to get kV, I divide my voltage by a thousand. So full load amps is single phase kVA, which is your three phase kVA divided by three. And my single phase KV is my three phase voltage. Divide that by the square root of three. Divide that by a thousand. And then I put all of that together in my equation. So I start with this equation up here. We know that my single phase KVA is my three phase KVA divided by three. That's my three phase, that's my single phase KVA. My single phase voltage is my three phase voltage divided by square root of three. And I multiply that by one over a thousand, or I divide that by a thousand. 
If I start moving numerators into denominators, denominators into numerators, remember, right? So one, like for example, uh, one over one over a thousand, I can bring that to the to the numerator, and one stays in the denominator. So I can take this to the numerator, and that stays in the denominator. So that's basically what I did here. The thousand moves up to the numerator. The square root of three moves up to the numerator. The three stays in the bottom, and the three phase voltage stays in the bottom. So that's how I how I create the equation for full load amps. Now, you might say, boy, I always see KVA over the square root of three, right? So if you do the math, square root of three divided by three is one over the square root of three. So some people will just do this. They'll just say, I'm going to make that the square root of three, and I'm going to delete that one. So it's KVA times 1,000 over the square root of three times the three-phase voltage. And we're going to do an example. So there is my, and there it is right here. So these, th there's two possible equations you can end up with. KVA times 1,000 over the square root of 3 divided by the three-phase voltage, or KVA times 1,000 times the square root of 3 divided by 3 divided by the three-phase voltage. Let's do an example. 1,500 KVA transformer. What is the single-phase KVA of a 1,500 KVA transformer? 1500 divided by 3, 500 kVA. Uh, for secondary full load amps, what's the single phase voltage? 480 divided by square root of 3. So 1500 times 1000 times the square root of 3 divided by 3 times 480 is this very large number divided by 1440. And my full load amps on the secondary is 1804. 0.2196. Now you might say, why would you ever do 0.2196? You would never do that. You'd say 1804 is my full load amps. Um, the only reason I left the 2196 is because I'm going to show you an easy way to get the primary full load amps without going through all of that math. Remember, to get the primary voltage, remember N1 over N2, the concept. If I take the secondary full load amps, times the secondary voltage divided by the primary voltage, that'll tell me what my primary full load amps is. I'm gonna calculate the primary full load amps for you the long way, and then we're going to apply that simple uh, turns ratio rule. Okay, so primary full load amps. Now, the equation is exactly the same, except my voltage on the on my voltage that I'm using is not 480, it's 4160 because that's the primary voltage of this transformer. That's going to give me my primary amps, and it's 208.1792. I wouldn't put the 1.1792, I would leave it at 208 amps, but again, I'm I'm doing this for mathematical reasons, and I just want to show you various ways that you can calculate full load amps. So remember, I won, based on these calculations, based on this and this, if I, if I substitute, actually this right here, I know that I won, if I move, if I move this over, if I rearrange this, so I moved I1 to this side of the equal sign. I2 stays on that side of the equal sign, but remember V1 and V2 have to come to the other side of the equal sign. So what do I do? I move V1, I divide both sides by V1, so that takes it out of the left-hand side of the equation, and it keeps it over here. And then I multiply both sides by V2. It takes it out of this left-hand side of the equation, and it puts it in the numerator on the right-hand side. So I know that I1 is equal to I2 times the secondary voltage, divided by the primary voltage. And we're going to test that theory out. So remember what my secondary amps was, 1804.2196. If I take 1804.2196 times 480, which is the secondary voltage, divide that by 4160, which is the primary voltage, line to line, my number is 208.1792. Now, you're going to say, hold on, Tom. That's not the turns ratio of that transformer. 
Why do you say that? Because I have a transformer that could be connected in delta on the primary and y on the secondary. And maybe I'll cover this a little bit later. But what I'm going to tell you is a basic fundamental rule. Hey, we got Nikola Tesla online. Great to see you. And Rudy Garza is on Facebook, which was really cool. So Rudy's out there on Facebook. Thanks for, uh, for uh, seeing the note up there, Rudy. Good seeing you too, brother. Um, and it looks like everybody else is out there on uh, coming in on YouTube, which is kind of cool. So cool. So we're streaming to all the platforms right now. All right, so here's the thing. When you think about a bank of transformer, the turns ratio of the three-phase bank is the line-to-line -line secondary is N2. Line-to-line -line primary is N1. We don't treat the turns ratio of each individual transformer. Now, you could. You could do that. But when we're dealing with full load amps and we're transposing currents from primary to secondary, I don't have to. I can avoid that square root of three thing. See, me and the square root of three did never got along. Um, you don't need to worry about that when you just use the line-to-line -line voltage on the secondary and the line-to-line -line voltage on the primary. I don't care if it's delta-delta, delta-y, y-y. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I've taken the square root of three out. And maybe if we have time at the end here, I'll show you why that doesn't matter. Okay, and then I, if I know the primary full load amps, I can use the same, a different equation. It's, remember, it's primary current time, or primary full load amps times the primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage gives me the secondary full load amps. And 1804.2197 is the exact same number I got doing it the long way. All right. Now, if I just use 208, it'll come up. Like, for example, let me do it. I'll do 208. If I, if I didn't have the 0.1792, if I did 208 times 4160 divided by 480, I get 1802.667. It's a little different. 208, I'm going to do it again, 4160 times 480 divide, 1802.6667. So it's a little, it's a couple amps off, and that's because of the 0.1792. So it makes a difference. Okay, three-phase applications. Transformers can be connected into various configurations, and if I connect the primary and secondary, I can connect delta, or why I can ground, I can establish the grounding. I can establish whether it's a separate, well, it's going to be a, uh, well, not all transformers are separately derived systems. If I have an auto transformer, for example, it's not a separately derived system. Delta Y, 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 those types of uh, transformers are all going to be separately derived systems. But I established the grounding of the entire distribution system, not the bonding, not the equipment grounding, but I establish whether or not I have a grounded conductor or not. If it's a delta system, I have no grounded conductor. It's an ungrounded system. If I wire it in a Y ground or a corner grounded delta system, so I can establish, my transformer is going to help me establish the grounding for the system. This, There's your phaser diagrams. There's your delta and your Y grounded system. Here is your, this is a delta Y. There's your delta delta, and this could be a center tap center grab tap grounded system. I can have a delta delta. Uh, I can have an ungrounded system. I can have a YY ungrounded system. So I can configure the connections on the primary windings and secondary windings. Remember, um, every, every one of these transformers is, uh, if I can do this, let me see if I can do this. That's a, Nope, screen. Oh, black. All right. So can I draw? Yes, I can. So what was I going to show you now? Um, I was going to show you Delta Delta system, Delta Y system. I can um, go back. Don't ever do this. Screen, unblack. All right. So 
if I if 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 I am configuring a system, say I'm backfeeding a transformer, and I'm going to use an existing transformer that's 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 wired delta y. I can, if I'm going to backfeed through through that transformer, now my primary is y and my secondary is delta. If I wanted a secondary grounded system, I have to change the configuration of the transformer. So it's important to understand the delta and the y and the how those how the system how the transformer is configured because it will establish the grounding the the type of system that you're installing. Now, okay, so UL standards transformers are going to be listed. You have 506 is specialty transformers. 1561 is your dry type general purpose and power transformers. 1562 are your transformers distribution dry type over 600 volts. In 2161, you have neon transformers and power supplies. So remember, there's transformers everywhere. I mean, you, you, you have a power supply. You, you could have a, a small power supply for, uh, for say, um, an, oh, here's a good one, uh, your doorbell. There's a small transformer for your doorbell circuits to lower that voltage. So uh, 506 requirements cover ignition transformers for use with gas burners and oil burners, specialty step-up transformers used in applications such as insect electrocuting. Oh, man. There you go. <laughs> you can uh, be the executioner of uh, flies and moths and all the other good stuff. Transformers incorporate overcurrent, over, over temperature. Uh, protective devices, transient voltage surge suppressors, power factor correction capacitors also covered by these requirements in UL506, intended uh, to be used in accordance with the National Electrical Code. 1561, these are, these are your general purpose and power transformers of the air-cooled, dry-ventilated, non-ventilated types in accordance with NEC. Uh, general purpose and power transformers of exposed core air cord, uh, 10, 10 kVA. So this is giving you the requirements, and you can always pause this later and read it. UL 1562, these are over. This, this is from 601 volts to 35,000 volts. That is UL 1562. 2161, neon transformers. Uh, Article 600, these are, for you, these are for your neon transformers and power supplies. So mercury, helium, argon, uh, similar type of gas in, enclosed in glass. These are all those applications for lighting and whatnot. Transformers are going to have labels, right? So this you'll see on this transformer here, it shows you how it's wired. It shows you uh, delta high, and and your uh, Y is your secondary. You have, uh, um, and I know it's kind of blurry, but it's just in general, you have a lot of information. You have the manufacturer's information. You've got um, uh, voltages and the taps. What the what each of the taps. Uh, are addressing Our, article 450 we already said article 450 450.1 is scope covers installation of all transformers and let's see if it says there are exceptions though okay, there are a series of eight exceptions and it says this article covers the installation of transformers dedicated to supplying power to a fire pump installation as modified by article 695 this article also covers the installation of transformers in hazardous locations as modified by Articles 501 through 504. But let's look at the exceptions. Exception number one is current transformers. So CTs are not covered in Article 450. Exception number two, dry type transformers that constitute a component part of other apparatus and comply with the requirements for such apparatus. Exception number three, transformers that are integral part of an X-ray high frequency or electrostatic coating apparatus. Those are going to be covered by the standards. Exception number four, transformers used with class two and class three circuits that comply with article 725. Exception number five, transformers for sign and outline lighting that comply with article 600. Exception number six, transformers for electric discharge lighting that comply with article 410. And transformer number or exception number seven, transformers used for power limited fire alarm circuits that comply with part three of article 760. And the last exception is transformers used for research, development, or testing where effective arrangements are provided to safeguard persons from contacting energized parts. So 450 is your article with exceptions. <clears throat>
All right, here's another really cool uh, port of part of this um, picture here. Ah, okay, so what I'm showing you is these two red lines right here. That's what I want you to focus in on. Those are called the transformer damage curves. Now, just like anything, conductors have a damage curve. If I drew a conductor damage curve, it would look something like this. Straight line on a diagonal. So, a transformer has a damage curve. If I let too much current pass through it for too long of a period of time, I can damage the transformer. I indicate on this time current characteristic curve the inrush current. I have, and this is the primary overcurrent protective device curve for this transformer. So now you might say, hey, Tom, that circuit breaker is not protecting this transformer because my damage curve is to the left of the circuit breaker trip curve. And I would say, you are absolutely right. That primary circuit breaker is not protecting that transformer from overloads. What protects a transformer from overloads? The secondary overcurrent protective device. The primary overcurrent protective device has two jobs. One, let the transformer be energized. And two, protect it from short circuit currents. So I'm more worried about this area and protection of that transformer than the other because the downstream overcurrent protective device, the secondary main breaker, is going to provide protection for overloads. Very similar to a motor. Think about motor applications. I don't have, for overload protection, overload prote protection can be placed anywhere in that circuit. It doesn't have to be at a specific location in the circuit. Short circuit protection has to be in a specific area of, the, of, of protection for, in that circuit. But overload protection can be placed in, in various locations. Same thing with a transformer. There's my, now I can, put a primary overcurrent protective device that offers more protection. Remember, when you see overcurrent devices that, that, that are very sharp edges like that, those are electronic trip units. I can let the inrush current flow and I can provide additional protection beyond what, um, beyond uh, what a standard, over, you know, what the code permits by making adjustments. There's another, I'm, I'm, I have a little bit more of a delay and I'm, uh, I've, I've changed the, the um, uh, this is an 800 amp, this is a 1200 amp, 500 kVA, 500 kVA. So these are all different size breakers that I can place. Because remember, the, the, the size of the primary overcurrent protective device are gonna be found in two tables in article 450, 450.3A and 450.3B. Um, 450.3B is for up 1,000 volts and less, and 450.3A is for greater than 1,000 volts, so over 1,000 volts. So I can, and, 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 and I, can, I can have a range of sizes of overcurrent protected devices on the primary of this transformer. I could use fuses. This is a, uh, an 800 amp fuse that, pro that will let the inrush current flow and not open. Let the transformer be energized, but provides good short circuit protection for that transformer. All right, so here is a, uh, this is a Square D Schneider Electric power cast transformer. A little bit more complicated, because what? You're looking at AAFA, what does that mean? Ambient air? Fans added. So this tells me I have fans. What, what do I, why would I add fans? If I want to get more KVA out of a transformer, so look at the base KVA, it's 3750. I can actually put up to 5,000 KVA through this transformer 
when I'm running my fans. So when you say a when you see AAFA, that means there's fans on this transformer, and I can actually put out more KVA. I do most of my calculations uh, based upon the lower, but if I'm at five thousand KVA, will my full load amps change? Absolutely. If I'm push if I'm if I'm pushing five five thousand KVA through this transformer, that's going to determine my full load amps on the secondary and primary based upon that. I got to make sure my overcurrent devices will still work when I'm loading it to 5,000 kVA. But you'll notice my impedance is only one value of impedance. I don't have uh, my, the, the impedance of this transformer does not change based upon fans being added. My impedance will always be the same because in a, in a short circuit application, I don't care if you have fans added or not. My impedance is physics. The impedance of that transformer will always be the same, regardless if you're pushing 5,000 kVA or 3,750 through it. But if I'm doing my 5.92, I'm going to be, if I'm, if I'm calculating a maximum available fault current on the secondary of a transformer, I'm going to use 5.92 plus or minus 10% and 3,750, not 5,000. So that's an important detail to remember. You don't use the 5,000. To get a larger number, you, you're going to use the 3750 and get a smaller number. I've got my voltage. I've got my um, low voltage and my high voltage. I got my class. I've got my, it's a three phase. There's my frequency. Remember the code says I have to have frequency. I've got taps. And there's my amperes, ambient air. F. Uh, fans added. So you'll notice there is a difference uh, based upon the voltages and uh, the taps, and there's a difference in full load amps when you have ambient and when you're using full of uh, the fans. So you've got to make sure you pick the right overcurrent protective devices based on uh, how much current you're going to be pulling. Let's see what else is on here. We've got the configuration. There's your, your configuration on how it's wired because it is an assembled unit. I've got the manufacturer's information, the dry type transformer. Conductors, temperature rise. I've got my listing mark. Exposure category C, de-energized transformer. Okay, there's another one. Here's another one. This is a three phase general purpose. I've got my manufacturer's symbol up here. I've got my UL label. I've got my taps. For my voltage on this <clears throat> taps for my voltages, I've got my uh, 208Y120, my high voltage. I've got, oh, this is nice because it puts the full load amps on there for me, low voltage and high voltage. I got my weight, my frequency, insulation rating, percent Z, 5.1. Now, I will tell you, you always should be applying the plus or minus 10% on these transformers. Because the way the standards operate, I can label that transformer 5.1, but it can be anywhere from minus to plus 10%. So that impedance, the lowest the impedance could be is 5.1 times 0.9, 4.59. 5 5.1 times 1.1, 5.61. So if I'm doing a short circuit calculation, if I'm doing an arc flash analysis, I need to, I need to know my minimum and maximum available fault currents, I can vary this. That number is not absolute. That number is not, if this isn't a 5.1% impedance transformer, it could be anywhere from 90% to 110%. All right, what else we got on here? We got the configuration. All right, so this is another one. This is a, a, a I was in, a, I was in a, a lab and I found this transformer, so I took a picture of it. Acme Transformer. I can just see Wild E Coyote. Um, I've got the uh, the manufacturer. I've got a, I've got their catalog number. I've got primary volts, secondary volts. Uh, this is a 50 kVA transformer, 60 hertz, single phase winding rise. Um, I'm trying to see what else is on here. Where's the impedance? There's there's the impedance, and I can't even read the impedance. It's so blurry. I think it's 3.0. There's my listing marks. There's my Canadian CSA. 
Enclosed Type 2, 3R when provided with Weather Shield. So there's a lot of information on the, uh, on the label of a transformer. Here's a single phase transformer. Uh, primary volts. Secondary volts. KVA, this is a 5 KVA transformer. Ah, remember what? Okay. Oh, this is good. Uh, let's go back to the marking. On a transformer, 450. Where's the marking? 450 to 11. It says, impedance of transformers, 25 kVA and larger. So I'm not required to put a percent Z on here, but let's see. Is there a percent Z? And uh, there's a frame. I don't see a percent Z. So there's no percent impedance on this transformer. It's not required by the code. Not necessarily required by the, by the uh, standards. Here, I can't... Got to put everybody in here. So there's a there's a 45 kVA transformer. That's greater than 25. So percent impedance better be here. There it is, 5.5 percent, 60 hertz. So does 50. It all hurts. Three phase. There's your wiring configuration. There's your tap. There's your listing. There's your coil tap arrangements to help you figure that one out. There's your line to line, line to line, line to neutral voltages. In accordance with NEC section 450-9, what is that? Ventilation. Allow at least six inches of clearance for ventilation. Check additional NEC and local codes. Uh, this one here is, is a metal and it's stamped. It's kind of hard to read. Sometimes you might have a hard time reading, reading some of these because they're etched in there it's like a metal plate but you'll notice here you'll see your there's your high voltage there's your low voltage 3.6 percent impedance weighs 340 pounds class aa insulation uh here are all your voltages uh, and and all your taps there's another one 240 primary and secondary this is a three key kva transformer and look we put the impedance 3.5 percent impedance don't necessarily have to, but we did. We put the impedance on here. So I showed you one that didn't have the impedance, and now I'm showing you a 3 kVA transformer that does have impedance marked on the label. Okay, so uh, I do have other stuff. It is 103. I know that. Um, let's do this. All right, so what did we talk about? Um, we talked about... We talked about 450... We talked about uh, the transformers can be wired differently. Uh, if you're going to backfeed a transformer, make sure it's listed for backfeeding. We didn't get into grounding and bonding because that'll be in the next level. I gave you the equations. You should know how to calculate full load amps of a transformer. Don't rely on full load amps being on the label. As you can tell on some of these uh, labels, there was no full load amps on the label of the transformer. So you've got to know how to calculate three-phase full load amps versus single-phase full load amps. That is very important to determine your overcurrent protection. What else? Um, we talked about the openings, and we're going to get into the code requirements in a different session. You know the standards that they're, they, they, that, uh, they're listed to. Uh, but up, but up, but up, but what else? What else? Um, do a discard on that. I'm gonna close this. Take a look. I'm gonna see if there's any uh, any any good questions. I do want to also open up technical presentations, distribution equipment, transformers, medium voltage. So I, I do want to just touch on something on medium voltage. I think. One of the things you always got to remember um, when you're dealing with, you want to save changes, dark flash. No, save. I should have. Oh, that's okay. Medium voltage, medium voltage. I'm just seeing if there is. Got your cores. 
Okay, now, now you know, I will talk about uh, this, this chat real quick. High efficiency. So the standards for efficiencies have changed over the years. Uh, that will bring the that will bring the impedances down. The fault currents will be higher. In some cases, you're required. In some cases, you're not required to use higher efficiency transformers. But in general, the transformers, uh, the the, the the efficiencies have gotten better per the the, the standards and requirements. Um, some transformers will be they call them K factor transformers. Some transformers are equipped to handle harmonic loads. Uh, the neutral in some in those cases, the grounded conductor, the neutral conductor, uh, is usually sized for about two hundred percent of the line current, because those triplin harmonics will add up in the neutrals. Your transformers have to remember uh, harmonic loads will generate heat in a transformer. So there are specialty transformers, K-factor transformers, UL1562, remember that number. Um, higher K-factors have higher harmonic currents and will require more cooling. So there are various ways to address that in a transformer. You need to make sure that you, um, that you, can, uh, that you can handle that um, uh, additional heat from harmonic loads. Uh, but up, but up, what else? We talked about, uh, so you have harmonics and uh, you have higher efficiencies. We talked about the, the article, the, the and we'll talk about grounding and bonding later. I'm just looking through some other of my standards and some other, other noted on here. You know why transformers hum, right? Anybody out there know why transformers hum? Put it in the chat. That's your quiz question. Why do transformers hum? I want to see it in the chat. Let's go. All right. All right. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Yeah, I think I did. We're going to get into protection of transformers. That's right, Michael. They don't know the words. Thank God. And Ryan Jackson in the house. They don't know the words. That's an important thing to remember. If anybody asks you, if you have a customer that says, hey, that trummer, that, that transformer's humming. Why? They don't know the words. All right. So that's all I'm going to cover on this one. So I... I, I I did a presentation at one point, and I found that a lot of people don't understand how to calculate full load amps. You've got the math for that. We're going to be building on this fundamental presentation or this fundamental session, and we're going to uh, we're going to dig in deeper with regard to transformer applications, selective coordination through transformers, picking the primary and secondary overcurrent protective devices for transformers, picking the primary and secondary conductors for transformers. We'll do a detailed transformer protection. We'll talk auto transformers. And uh, so we're going to just build on this session in the future. You're going to want to subscribe to the IAEI. Don't forget to subscribe. There it is. Don't forget to subscribe subscribe to the IEI YouTube channel um, because, you know, again, we're going to be building out this, this session. This was on Transformers. We did a very fundamental uh, on Transformers. Transformers can be very complicated. We're going to get more and more in depth as we go along. Subscribe to the channel and also you're going to want to take a look at our um, take a look at the at the uh, playlists within the IAEI's YouTube channel because we will be populating more and more videos on each of those topics. I remember I'm, I'm, my playlist, transformers, panel boards, uh, circuit breakers, fuses, um, transformers. We're, we're going to create some of those uh, playlists on specific equipment and keep expanding your knowledge on those applications. So stay tuned for that. 
Don't forget, IEI membership has its advantages, so you're going to want to join and get involved and get engaged with your local chapters, local divisions. Uh, and if you uh, have an interest to, uh, to um, do more, possibly live, or um, if you want to provide some, some uh, materials or whatnot for our sessions together, please share those with me. Reach out to me. You know how to reach me. All right. So that's the program for today. I really appreciate <laughs> Alexa. Alexa, stop. <laughs> she, I don't know why she, uh, she just <laughs> scared the bejeebers out of me uh, because I'm supposed to be alone and she just starts talking. So anyway, thanks for everything that you guys and gals do for the electrical industry. Thanks for jo joining in Keith Laughlin, Nikolai Tesla, uh, Ryan Jackson, Chris Cleveland, Lou Petrucci, Rudy Garza in the house, Mr. Hofkin, Chris Folan, Vincent Delacroche. Thanks all of you for joining and Jody Wages, enjoy, thanks for joining uh, in our program today. See you next Tuesday and um, maybe, maybe again some other time. So subscribe because you never know when I'm going to go live. Hit the subscribe button. Stay safe. And remember, please stay healthy. Until next week.